Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for August 13th, 2021. Welcome back to the Simple Cyber Defense. This week we're going to be talking about two uh, mobile devices vulnerabilities, one being in the Android Kindle app and another being an Android malware that attacks your Facebook account. So let's get into it. And my name is Carl. I'm joined with... Hi, my name is Ahmad. And we're going to get started right now. So we're going to get right, started so, uh, with the uh, Android attack or the uh, Kindle attack. Oh, sorry, the Amazon one. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> uh, on, uh, on August 9th, there was a report from Checkpoint. Checkpoint is a, is a large um, uh, uh, cybersecurity company. And uh, what they did is they found that, that they, they released a report that your Amazon Kindle e-reader could be open the hacking through free ebooks that you can download from the store. Um, and the thing is, you know, it's, it's a, there is a very huge audience out there uh, where people just take free stuff just because they're free. You know, you'll see a lot of people that download a yeah. lot of apps and books and music on their phones just because they're free. Um, but usually it's free for a reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And one thing is if, if a product is free, one thing you have, you have to understand is you are the product. Yep, and then it's you know, even even when it's legitimate, like things like Twitter and Facebook and all the social media stuff, you are the product. Yeah, it's free for you to use, but how do you think they're making those billions and billions of dollars? You know, create a profile over you of you, and then they mm -hmm. sell that to advertisers. That's how and they make track it. you around all over the place. Yeah, yeah, um, and you know, Amazon is no different. You know, Amazon is is, is a, as much of a technology company as it is a consumer products company. And one of the one of the very their most popular products is the Kindle. You know, as far as eBooks, it's cheap, it's reliable, it, it works. Um, and because it is popular, it opens the doors for security risks. You have a lot more people using that product, so there's a lot more people that will that you have a, a bigger market. Um, what Checkpoint uh, what Checkpoint said is that um, a malicious book can be published and made available free on the e-library. Uh, including, you know, a Kindle store, or you can even sideload it via self-publishing. So you don't even need to pay a publisher. You can self-publish that book. And that book, uh, you know, will will disguise itself in, in a malicious software, will disguise itself inside that book. And then when that book is successfully installed, that ebook can expose information, which is like your personal identifying information, billing information, account information, credit card information, et cetera. Um, and this information can then be used to uh, to do phishing attacks against the owner. Um, now, if, if somebody's able to put any type of malware on any device, that malware can do anything. We don't have to wait for phishing attacks to come. You know, they can get into your network. They can get all your information directly from your Kindle. Um, the, the good thing is Amazon did address that, that vulnerability. And they released a patch, which you know you can on your computer or on your Kindle. You go to your uh, to your home screen, you tap the menu icon, you tap settings, and then in the settings area you tap update. And this is you know in our industry called patch management, right? And this is something that must and we can't we can't stress this enough. We talk about uh, security as layers, and we talked before about VPNs, and we talked about. You're, uh, you're uh, using a, a, a vault for your passwords, a password manager. And now the next thing, it's just as important is system updates, software updates. Anytime you get an update, do not wait. Turn your auto update on for everything. If you don't have auto update turned on, make sure you put it on your calendar. Hey, I'm gonna check updates every Monday or every two or twice a week. Yes, mm -hmm. updates are rolled that frequently because they're just like there are engineers rolling updates there are people on the other side of that trying to attack and see how they can get in 
through uh, and reverse engineer those th those softwares on those applications. So everybody be careful out there, protect your information, protect your private information online and be safe. And one thing I'd like to add is just because your device doesn't see an update doesn't necessarily mean that it's not vulnerable because some devices are actually outside their what they call the life of the product like some like a lot of uh, older android devices would never get any updates because they're just so old that google has abandoned them right. and so if you if your device doesn't receive updates for more than like six months i'd probably go online and see if the vendor is actually still supporting your device and if you can probably just upgrade to a newer device or if not be a little bit more careful and and be cautious of what you download on that device because chances are if it has a vulnerability it's never going to get patched right yeah and also if you are going to trade in the device or sell it i mean we don't recommend it <laughs> yeah but if you make sure you reset it and you wipe it you know it'll take somebody very technical to be able to retrieve that information yeah uh, yeah do a, at least there's a lot of devices out there that get sold or traded in and they're not even factory reset yeah and then you could just open it yep. up and have all the data right there yep. Yep. yep all right so is there anything else you want to add to this no no all right so we'll move on to the Android apps that hijack your Facebook account. Um, so starting around March 2021, Google had noticed that there were some particular apps that were able to hijack people's Facebook accounts. The way they did this was they had a little uh, an application they gave out for free, again, free information free apps <laughs> and what the app creator did was he injected some triggers so that either you click on a particular ad or it told you hey vote for your favorite soccer player or some something like that and then when you clicked on that it opened up a page that kind of looked like a facebook login so you would log in thinking hey this is facebook for whatever reason, I have to log into Facebook to make this uh, valid or this poll or whatever they're luring you in. And then once you put in your Facebook credentials, an error page would pop up. Uh, they're saying that the product that you're looking for is no longer there or that the poll has closed or something like that. But in the back end, there's JavaScript running and they're stealing all of your, your they're stealing your username and password and if you use a 2fa they're also stealing that token too and automatically populating it into facebook and taking over your account the way they do this is having little uh, computer bots so they can do this really fast within seconds of you putting in your information and once they have your account what they'll do is go through all your contact list send them links say hey i voted for this particular whatever poll or i got this free product click this link and you can get it too or you can vote in the poll too and then once your friends click the links their facebook account gets hijacked the same way um so far google has addressed this and took out a lot of different apps that had this problem going on with it but the problem is still persisting because a lot of people are using third-party apps too or app stores and they're sideloading the apps in there so that they're bypassing the Google protection things that Google has in place for their Play Store I know there are some situations where going through a third party is beneficial for the user but if you are going through that, I would be very cautious of what apps you install. And even go a step further, even with Google Play, because there have been instances like these particular apps that actually did get into the Google Store. And I would suggest actually scrutinizing them too. One thing you could do is you can 
go online and search for that particular app that you're wanting to download and put in the app's name plus malware and see if anyone has reported any malicious activity based upon the apps because a lot of researchers are also looking into these apps to see if they're malware or not and if they do find malware apps they are more likely to not only contact Google to get them off the Google Play Store but also publish on their blogs or wherever saying hey we found this situation where this app does something malicious don't download it if you do have it delete it and what not um, luckily most of the people who were victims of this were able to get their Facebook account back but the question is how much damage has been done because they got their account back there's no telling that did all their Facebook data get scraped they don't know so far evidence hasn't been shown that but because the hackers are using legitimate logins it's hard for Facebook to say okay was this the user or was this the hacker so they may have also not only passed out the invitations to your friends but they also might have scraped your entire Facebook account and have all your private data for them to do whatever they want with maybe do another phishing campaign where they have you click on another link and then they hijack your bank account or who knows this <laughs> is sky's the limit when they have that information yeah yeah so is there anything you want to add to it well just one of the things that um uh, kind of like caught my not caught my attention but kind of seems like uh, uh, it creates a botnet it's, it's, yeah. a, it's some version of a botnet right where mm -hmm. when it, it doesn't just hijack your your computer or your account it hijacks everybody that would accept that invitation from you yeah right and this is and this is where it's you know where the danger lies because if i'm getting something from somebody i trust You're i'm more apt to click on it yep. right so one of the things that we all, i always tell you know my my friends or people who are not well versed in this is if you get a link from somebody that you trust but it doesn't seem because it will seem like something awkward yeah. you know it will seem like oh this is this is an advertising why would my daughter send me something like this why would my friend send me something like this mm -hmm. don't click on it and 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 if it looks legitimate and it looks like google or it looks like a facebook go and type that url in in the search bar instead of clicking yeah. on it because you could replace one character and you you know, you may not see it. So or that's even. just what it, yeah. And I, yeah. I just wanted to touch on that real quick. Yeah. Um, or even sometimes what they'll do is the text will have the correct URL in there, but then mm -hmm. once you click it, because the way uh, links work, you can actually have a different type behind there and say, okay, when he clicks this text, go to this website, which is completely different from what you clicked. So it may say facebook.com slash whatever, but then when you click it, it may be fakebook.co.xe or whatever. And then yeah. you're in the malicious site and not know because you think, oh, it's a Facebook link. Click. Yeah. And sometimes all it takes is you just to click that link. Yeah. For, for script to, to, you know, to, to activate. Your... Yeah. And a lot of times what I would tell my friends is if you get something from me and even if it does look legit, text me or call me on a different platform so that you know that you're getting to me. Say, hey, did you send me this? I'm like, I can say yes or no or whatever. So just make sure it's on a separate Plat other separate platform or a text message or something that's outside where you got the message so that way it's not a situation where the attacker has your account and if you contact me through that same account and the hacker has control of it of course he's going to say yeah it was me click on it no problem but if you give me a text that's outside that network outside his control and I say no that's not me then you won't click on it right yeah Cool. So, yeah, so in this case, the best thing to do is just to try to be more vigilant of what applications you download. Make sure you stay away from 
third party downloads as much as you can and just take the extra step to actually just research this particular app just to make sure that it doesn't have malicious uh, malicious code in it and again just verify it it takes like two seconds to just verify to see if your friend or parent or whoever actually did send you that link because like you said if you just click it once they got you <laughs> Yep. But it just takes a few seconds to say, hey, Bob, did you send me this? And they say, yes, everything's fine. If they say no, throw it away. Don't even think about it. You just probably tell them, hey, your account may be compromised. Can you change your password or something? Yeah. So, all right. So, is there anything else you want to add? No. This, nope. is, this is it. All right. So, I guess this concludes this week in Simple Cyber Defense. You can... Reach us on all, many of the different platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and many of the podcasts out there. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. If you like what was in this episode, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing with others. For more information, to suggest a topic, or to donate, head over to simplecyberdefense.com.